fans of ASMR Sports right back with you. Hope everybody's doing well. As I mentioned on my last video, I purchased another large quantity of things. Um, although, what you see before you is, is the box of um, kind of miscellaneous packs that I purchased um, as part of the deal that I got like a few weeks ago. So this is uh, something that I've owned since then, but have not had in my possession because I forgot to take it with me and had to go pick it up from the seller. It uh, lives uh, pretty, pretty near to me. Um, so I thought we'd go through this box. I, I bought this entire box, I think. I mean, I, I bought a lot of things at once, but basically there was this box of cards. And uh, I was like, okay, if I buy everything, you know, that we've agreed to, whatever uh, number of dollars would you sell me this box of packs for a hundred dollars um, the answer was yes otherwise I wouldn't have these but I'll give you kind of an overview here so it's one of these three row boxes individual price stickers on like every one of these packs which is not my favorite but actually I think that these stickers I've been peeling stickers off the stuff I bought um, from this guy and these white ones are pretty they're like the kind that come off easy so that's probably fine yeah, let's let's look through here, shall we? I'm gonna probably move this off camera. And see those when I haven't seen them before. You know, I think, like, a fun goal in collecting non 
non-sports, by the way, my last video, which was a non-sports video, um, got some, you know, feedback that certainly some people really love the non-sports content, so I appreciate, uh, appreciate hearing that. I, I love non-sports stuff, too, and I've, I've always thought, like, it would be fun just to see how many different, unique non-sports wax packs you could get. Now, if you just collected stuff from, like, tops from the 70s and 80s, and, you know, if you had a big budget then before then, because there's stuff going all the way back to, like, the 50s that you can get on open packs of. But if you just did that stuff, it would be a, a pretty, you know, small number of things to get. I mean, it still would be, like, you know, hundreds of different packs, but, um, you know, not too many. But if you start if you start doing, like, you know, this stuff, and in the 90s there's just been a ton of, uh, you know, kind of crazy, like, TV and movie sets... Uh, by just little independent kind of card publishers. And, uh, I don't know, I think that would easily be like maybe tens of thousands of different packs. So that's probably not some, but I don't know, it would be, oh, these are fun because look at this. They have the old, uh, you know, department store price tag on here, five for a buck. So these are Topps Desert Storm from the, you know, 1991. It's funny because I, I should know this, right? But I don't because I was a child when this was happening. Desert Storm might have been like the Kuwaiti liberation. Um, but uh, I can't remember. It's funny like how many you know people lost their limbs and died and stuff. And it's like we can't even remember what went on. And people who were in this war now you all would think are like old folks because they're like you know, they're probably they're in their 50s um, and 60s. But of course, you know, when I was a kid, this was going on. Everyone was 18, 19, 20. That was a long time ago. But yeah, I was in like junior high. When this was going on, it always seemed odd to me that Tops made a set about a war, but it's funny because like, actually is from a uh, year after this one so maybe Pacific side well tops is doing desert storm cards we should do World War two cards although you know there, there actually are like sets from the 50s that cover like World War two content and World War one content so it's actually a, you know not a new thing at all to, to do a, a card set like this um, so but that's cool five for a buck was probably the clearance although I'm sure these sold for like 25 or 35 cents out of the gate. Um, there's only eight cards in there. I think, I think like, um, yeah, 1990 uh, Tops Baseball had a MSRP of 50 cents. You know, that what was, what was on the box of cards is 50 cents. And those are 15 cards. So generally an issue like this, these non-sports would be probably about 35 cents back, you know, in the early 90s. Better put these back in the box as I go, otherwise I'll have a giant stack. Well, I am seeing a lot of Pacific stuff, so maybe this is going to be the Pacific uh, trading cards video. Um, here's Eight Men Out movie cards from the, uh, the movie about the 1919 uh, World Series scandal and the Chicago White Sox, known as the Black Sox. So that's cool. I, I, I you know, I've seen um, these cards before. I've never, I don't, I've never bought any as a kid or anything and opened any, but uh, I've seen them out there, so that's not like too crazy. And then, okay, we do have some of these fantastic. So these are what I was thinking of. These are the Baseball Legends cards that uh, Pacific made and um, I, I love these I, I think they really they look cool I remember getting these as a kid and you can get like Mickey Mantles and we'll open for, for some of these where um, I have like a number of like more than like five of, of the packs I'll definitely dig in but if I only have like a couple or one or two packs then I might not open them for this video so this is uh, I think 
the second series of the first edition of these. So they did these like for like three or four years in a row. And I remember the the first the first edition of the first, you know, ever year of these, which I think was like eighty seven or something. It was like a red wrapper, so it looked like this, but it was red. And the design was the same as these, so I loved these, you know, silver borders. I thought they looked really cool. Um, and, you know, in series one, you had like Mantle and Maze and Aaron and all the, you know, huge legends. Now this is series two is going to have a much, uh, much, uh, you know, lesser group of names. Roger Craig, a uh, longtime manager after his, uh, it's funny, I didn't know he was a pitcher when he played. Kind of, kind of rare to see pitchers manage. Um, so, cool fun fact. Lloyd Weiner, Sam McDowell, Buddy Lou the Alec. I haven't like Eddie Matthews. I've heard of, but <laughs> look at that, Tito Francona. So that's um, you know, the Tito Francona we know. Um, as manager of the Red Sox, and now the Indians. Um, that's his dad. Sewell. Oh, these are like painted images. Tony Cuccinello and Jim Hunter. Catfish Hunter. So pretty cool. It's a bummer those weren't series one because those packs are like just loaded with super awesome guys. And I thought it was so fun to get cards of them. But yeah, lots of Pacific stuff from this era seems to be in this collection. These are uh, P. Rose Living Legend cards. So this was a set that they put out, uh, boy, back in like the, I want to say 2000s. Oh yeah, Leaf did this. Doesn't say the year though. Oh, 2012. Yeah, so these cards are kind of, uh, these are sort of um, notorious because um, I think it's like blowout cards. Like every time they have a sale, they have these, these um, boxes for sale and they come as blaster boxes and every blaster box you get a guaranteed autograph card uh, from the set you know of uh, P. Rose and I think the blaster boxes they, they've sold for like $10 or less every time so if you want a P. Rose autograph it's a great way to get one and if I recall I ordered I ordered one or two of those uh, a while ago got my P. Rose auto and I believe it's just a loose card, like in a pot, or it's not loose, but it's in a um, top loader, and it's just floating around in the box, and then you get the packs. So the packs are pretty, pretty worthless. Next up we have, uh, <laughs> this is a, uh, I'll open this because it's already open, but this is just a, a th one third of a 80 Donruss rack pack. Like at card shows and stuff, 
I've never bought any, but uh, yeah, 330 cards instead of like, you know, old school Hall of Famers and stuff. So that's kind of interesting. And then we got a lot of kind of junk that I just have way too much of. 1990 Donruss Baseball. So this, this 
this was definitely the, you know, the cheap, kind of low-rent card set compared to Upper Deck, but still much better than Tops. Um, and, uh, yeah, Ricky Jordan. Ricky Jordan was who we were looking for back in 89. Uh, and Griffey, but, yeah, I don't know, what, 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 what can you say about this stuff? It's... There's just so much of this stuff out there, but, you know, honestly, these, these packs and boxes are worth a fair a bit, you know. It used to be these boxes were like five bucks a piece for the longest time, even with that Griffey Jr. rookie in there. But nowadays they, you know, they sell, um, you know, a box of this stuff, I think, might go for 30 or $35, which is, like, kind of crazy compared. Oh, that's what I like to see. Ben Franklin. Wow, I didn't notice that about these. I wonder if they're all like this. Uh, looks like not all of them, but most of them. Oh, wow, that's cool. That, you know, that makes me <laughs> super excited to have these. Because, you guys, Ben Franklin was where I went to get, like, a ton of cards back in, like, 87, 88, 89 time frame. And there's very few Ben Franklins left. I was actually uh, recently in a town near where I live. It's called um, Fergus Falls, Minnesota. Shout out to my Minnesotans out there. But uh, I went to that town. It's a it's a really a charming little town that I'm kind of surprised I haven't spent more time in. You know, it's one of these towns where probably most people who go to that town, <laughs> you know, from where I live in, in Fargo, North Dakota, they, they, they're familiar with, you know, this, the strip of, like, stores that is just off the highway, because if you're traveling, I have to uh, clear my throat here, I'll mute you guys, just a minute. If you're traveling, uh, basically from, you know, where I live in eastern North Dakota, you know, into Minnesota, usually going to Minneapolis, travel along a highway called uh, Interstate 94. And along Interstate 94, there's a number of towns in Minnesota where people stop for, you know, gas, for groceries, for um, food. And all those towns basically have, um, you know, uh, sections of the town that is right off the highway, right? And that's to cater to the people who are traveling. And um, most people are familiar with only that area of town, but... Most of these towns have, like, a sort of historic downtown that would have been the, you know, the uh, heart of the city back before the highway even ran through, you know, that, that area. Um, and oftentimes those downtowns are still, you know, they have kind of an old-time small-town vibe to them. And um, they're, uh, you know, some of them are quite charming. And, uh, you know, have fun little restaurants and little shops, kitschy little shops and stuff. It's sort of my dream to, like, live in one of those towns and just have a sports card shop. Just talk to the neighbors all day and, you know, make zero dollars. But actually, these days, you could do that and actually do quite well if you just had a breaking business on, this, you know, on top of it. And you sold online, you know, and you were able to buy collections from people and just sell all that stuff on eBay. You know, I think actually you could do quite well. And who knows what collections might be lurking in attics, you know, in those small little towns. But, anyways, um, so yeah, this past summer I took uh, the kids um, out to this place, Fergus Falls, because they have like a, a beach there um, that's actually quite nice and, you know, very, um, uh, very, uh, um, it's not busy, like, ever. <laughs> um, so, it's great. It's a great place to go for that. And, you know, went into town and just kind of walked around the downtown area and stuff. And, lo and behold, unbeknownst to me, they had a Ben Franklin there in the little downtown area. And uh, I went in and it was like a, you know, like a time capsule from probably about, you know, this period, 1989 or so. It was probably the last time they'd done any kind of renovation or anything and uh boy it was crazy i was like this is so cool i just love this place unfortunately they didn't have any sports cards but they had you know toys and stuff um here we have uh hoops from 1991 series one so this is the uh, third year of hoops i'll open these just because we haven't done any basketball actually we're coming across a bunch of basketball I only wanted this pack, so I might as well get into it. I wouldn't really hang on to something this like this. I have like boxes of this stuff. I have, I think, um, around.
design there. Just, you know, white border, colored uh, kind of inset border, and then the um, NBA Hoops logo with the, with the team logo. So very, very simple design, as Hoops was certainly known for back then. Okay, next up, these, these I think would be fun to open, but um, I'm not going to open these just because I only have three of them, and I'm these are probably the only three, yeah, these are only three packs of this stuff I own, so I kind of want to hang on to it, maybe figure out something interesting to do. But uh, these are Series 2, 94, 95, so I have no idea who. That was, you know, well before Kobe. I'm um, not sure who would have been, if anybody, in that rookie class. But I presume there's rookies in here. Usually Series 2 basketball stuff has rookie cards, you know, as the sort of front and center. somebody at the door. I'm going to pause. Go get that. Okay. Funny um, coincidence that while I'm recording a video, I got a, a delivery of sports cards. I, um, I don't know if I can show you. Let's see here. Those guys. so we're not in the uh, card dungeon. You don't see any card dungeon behind me, unfortunately. But uh, in those two boxes, which look to be in good shape, there's about $5,000 in uh, 1981 Topps basketball cards of various forms that I picked up a really nice deal on um, a few days ago. So happy to see those safely arrive. Um, and I'll be doing a video on those um, sometime soon. But uh, here we have NBA Hoops from Skybox 94. Okay, so this, even though it says Skybox and there was like a Skybox brand of basketball, this is just Hoops. Um, so those are not particularly fancy cards. And then speaking of Skybox, Right behind it, we've got, this is the um, first, you know, set of Skybox Series 1 and Series 2. And these are, yeah, I remember when this came out, these were, these were very uh, premium for the day. But, uh, yeah, they're very cheap now. And um, these are the cards that I did a um, video recently on the uh, Sports Card Shopping Network. I had, I guess I got a bunch of boxes of these, so I was selling packs of those, which are sale if anybody would like any oh you know what I just realized guys look at that this is um this is one of the 94 95 oops series 2 actually seems to have torn so we get to open it yay oh wow look at that look at the top of that card it got crimped in the uh, ceiling of the pro of the pack this one did too Luckily, there. Nothing, nothing good. So that's not. Oh, I was just gonna. I was actually just gonna look at. Um, <coughs> look at this. This was like a kind of a very new concept of showing like the odds. Um, Power Predator cards. <laughs> I don't know if I go with that name, but one in twelve. Magic Call Rookie one in twelve. Magic Call Rookie team card. Six packs. Okay, so not not too many, you know, cards in there. But fun to see that. Here's another one that got crimped on the top. Robert Parrish. <coughs> Man, that's got to be like the last year of his career or something. Oh, look at this. Dang. Craig Elo. I mean, what a card. This like this. I don't, you can tell this is gold. Foil all around, man. That is like a nice looking card. Dang, if that were a Jordan, I'd be psyched. But, um, especially from like a product, a kind of low end product, I don't know what um, gold mine It's funny because it doesn't say any odds for that, so I don't know what. Looks like it's just another kind of in 
insert set. Wow, really cool though. Really cool looking card. Ron Harper. And here is a uh, rookie, um, Jim McIvan. Never heard of that guy. Oh, this is, uh, isn't this one of the exciting you guys I mean think about like this was 90 91 hoops and then you know a couple years later we got 94 hoops and um, a few years later I should say I mean just the amount of like foil and sparkle and sexiness out of some of these inserts I mean what these 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 cards are nuts that's just a rip off but yeah I don't know wow that's pretty impressive I really that I really like that a lot. I mean, I'm sure there's tons of very interesting cards. I would definitely want like series one of this stuff though, because that's gonna have Jordan cards of those inserts. But anyways, wow, that was pretty fun. Something I've never seen before is those that particular set. Like a Spanish one too, but uh, kind of kind of 
seemed like this was uh, a set they just internationalized a bunch of different ways. So there's probably a few different varieties of this, and who knows if the French, yeah, the boxes of this stuff didn't seem to be going for like too much. It was maybe like a hundred dollars for a box of 36, you know, which is like whatever, less than three dollars a pack. These are marked at four. I'm sure they have some value, but I don't think four is probably what I would pay for these if I were to buy them. But uh, you know, they were part of a lot, so I want to count how many I have. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's my guy, Johnny Starks. Love it. New York Knicks. Okay. Well, you don't see that every day. Exact same card. Slight of head. That's a uh, Anthony Penny Hardaway right there. Three cards there with uh, out the name of the player on the front, which is kind of wacky. Playoff time. Yeah, are these not ever going to put the <laughs> name of the player? Okay, I guess coming up we have some cards that are a little more traditional looking. Ooh, look at that. Playoff time with the Jordan on the front there. We'll take that out for sure. All right, so here's the base card. We only get like four of them, five of them. Anthony Mason.
guessing these guys at the end are all the rookies. Well, I don't know. Mark Jackson obviously was not a rookie. Um, yeah, I don't know what exactly is going on, but it does look like there are Jordan cards in here, and that's what's important. NBA Extremes, Muggsy Bogues, Bud Webb. What? Oh, because they're extremely short. Dan Barros, Avery Johnson, Velody Divots. The Jordan Collection. There's four Jordan Collection cards. So I don't know, is this like the whole checklist, I wonder? I don't know. I mean, very well might be kind of interesting. It's a pretty small checklist, if that's true. But, uh, well, I'm glad we opened that second pack, because that was... Educational. Let's keep rolling, guys. So, I've actually got another kind of couple of like packs that I've not uh, ever opened before from a basketball series one, 1993 NBA hoop. So, this is the year before. What was that last one we did? 95. <coughs> yeah, uh, no, 94. So, this was just one year before that one. That we opened where we got uh, kind of a bunch of real cool looking foily cards. But that was series two, and this is series one. So these, I'm tempted to open these because, you know, you'd get all the big stars in this checklist. But it doesn't really say, like, what kind of, um, it's a trap lottery exchange of cards, but nothing about, like, other kinds of inserts or anything. So I'd have to do some research on those. These uh, collector's choice ones back. Those are pretty interesting. I don't know. Those are something I might want to open a bunch of. So, yeah. See if I can get the base Jordan. By the way, um, did I actually see any French on there? Okay, there we go. Yeah, we do. Alright, next up we got I think the last of the basketball. Luster 91 Fleer Basketball. I have, uh, as you know, if you've uh, checked my website, I have loads and loads of uh, Series 1 of this stuff. Interestingly, Series 2 came in these uh, cellophane wrappers, whereas Series 1 was in the traditional wax wrappers. Um, series 1 is uh, significantly more valuable than Series 2 because um, I think these do not include... Well, actually, I think these do... Oh, well, let's, what the hell? Let's open one. I think these do include both Series 1 and, you know, the update cards. But, you know, there's no good rookies, so... Um, basically, the Series 2 cards you get in here are a waste of time and money. And, consequently, the 91, you know, Series 1 is where it's at. So that's kind of interesting. I sort of wonder what the Jordan, you know, would go 
Cummings. Um, Charlie Hayes. Paul Mero. Look at that. Tom Flash Gordon. And, uh, who's that on there? Is that uh, Brady Anderson? Chris Hoyles.
box of uh, another box of packs that I bought is part of the more recent purchase I did um, and uh, it's got a bunch of these but it's got like a ton like gosh probably like four boxes worth of uh, the tops version from this year 1990 